The Chang people are one of the 55 national minority groups living in China today. They inhabit the mountainous regions in the northwestern part of Sichuan province. Chang is a name given by ancient Hans to the nomadic people in western China. In their own language, they call themselves Irma people, meaning ourself. The Chang are recognized as the first ancestor culture due to their ancient roots. Evidence on bones and tortoise shells shows that the Chang were living in communities in northwestern China during the Shang dynasty, circa 16th to 11th centuries BC. Some Changs were assimilated by the Tibetans and others by the Hans, leaving a small number unassimilated. This group gradually moved to the upper reaches of the Minjiang River and eventually became today's Chang nationality with a total population of about 102,000. The Chang people hold a belief system based on animism. At the center of Chang culture stands the shaman, called Bi in Chang language. The Bi is the keeper of the culture, the scholar of the community. Among his many responsibilities, the Bi coordinates the relationships between human beings, spirits, and deities for the welfare of all the villagers. Today, China is modernizing, a result of economic development, with enormous accompanying social changes. These changes are influencing the ancient belief system and traditional customs of the Chang culture. Although the Chang people have their own language, most speak Chinese, and some few are even learning English in the hopes of obtaining better jobs outside of the village. Therefore, the Chang language could be considered to be an endangered species. In the same way, the bees' skills, knowledge, and wisdom, traditionally transmitted orally from generation to generation, is also endangered. Chengfeng is the first Chang village outside of Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province. Given its proximity to Chengdu, about a four-hour drive, this village of about 130 families has undergone profound changes on its development, notably from the surrounding dominant culture, the Han Chinese. Therefore, Changfeng is an ideal place from which to begin an exploration to observe the changes that Chang society is experiencing as villagers seek to modernize. In Changfeng, we can see the effects of modernization on the culture in the architecture, the language, the belief system, and ultimately, the music and dance of the community. The following program tells the story of one B, the only shaman now living in Changfeng village. Shang is the only bee now living in Changfeng village. He is 63 years old. It's a Chinese name, and like all the people in Changfeng village, he has no name in Chang language. His wife died of tuberculosis in 1976, and his two daughters moved out of the family house when they married. Now, Wang Zhishang lives in this house, with his two grandsons and one granddaughter. The house is perhaps hundreds of years old, built with stones from the mountainside. His daily work is weaving bamboo tools and farming. His annual income is about 2,000 renminbi, or 25 US dollars. Thus, the family ekes out a living in this destitute mountain region.
No one in the village can be sure how many years their ancestors have been living in this village, which is located at east longitude 103 degrees dot 29, north latitude 31 degrees dot 21. The village is about 1,200 meters above sea level. The surrounding mountains reach to a height of 5,000 meters above sea level. On one hillside, in the western part of the village, there are ruins, hundreds of rooms which the ancient Chung people inhabited. According to elder villagers, this is the place where their ancestors lived for generations. More than 100 years ago, the streams dried up, resulting in difficult water shortages. The families abandoned their homes and moved down. Now, these stone walls, silent ruins, are one of the most telling witnesses for the history of this village. In the middle section of the village is the Chung Watchtower, or Loji, as it is called in Chung language. The Loji was originally built for protection and defense against invasions by rival tribes in ancient times. In the deep part of the mountain, behind Wang Zhisheng's house, there is a small cabin, which is the public cemetery of the village. Cremation has been a tradition in Chung culture. Ashes of the dead of different generations, including those of the ancestors, are kept here. The people get bummed again. People tell it. It's never better. Never better. It's just. This is a ceremony called Anchen, a ritual offering to the gods performed by the bee. Wang Zhisheng is demonstrating this performance for our film crew. He is wearing a cheddar, a headdress made of monkey skin. He plays the bu, a single-sided sheepskin drum while singing a verse from the Chang scripture. The Anchen was once a common ritual performed by the Chang tribes to make an offering to the gods. In the ceremony, various deities are invited into the villagers' homes in the hope that family members will be blessed with good health and prosperity. Before 1952, this and other rituals were part of daily life in the village. History explains why 1952 was a turning point in Chang culture. The People's Republic of China was established in 1949. Liberation from the feudal controls came to Chang later in 1952. After that year, the B system was abolished as the countryside peasants were liberated and the new government began the social developments that have been part of modernization plans, including health and education reforms, as well as other improvements. The most difficult part for a young shaman to learn is the bee's holy book, of which there are 72 chapters. Some of these are creation stories, some 
are epics about heroes and warriors. Some are mythology tales. There are also numerous narrative poems about Chung customs. All of these can be considered an encyclopedia of Chung culture. Since Chung language has no written form, this encyclopedia is memorized and transmitted orally from generation to generation. There is evidence that in ancient times, there was a written script for the language. Still today, the bee refers to this body of knowledge as the holy book, even though it exists in spoken form only. At the age of 10, Wang Shisheng began to learn shaman skills. Often, he practiced the songs from the holy book with chopsticks, striking a wood table to imitate the rhythms to be used on the sheepskin drum. This is how he learned to recite the scripture chants. His father was his teacher, who was at that time one of several bees in the village. Wang Shisheng studied with his father for seven years and completed his apprenticeship. According to tradition, when an apprentice bee has completed his study, the teacher will arrange for the initiation ceremony where the student will receive his monkey skin headdress, protector animal guides, the sheepskin drum, and the implements used in rituals. For the initiation, the teacher will invite 20 other shamans who gather on the mountain, along with the entire village, to witness and approve the new bee. Wang Chisheng never had an initiation. At the time when he would have had his initiation, he traveled to the distant countryside as a soldier to support the new government. And after that, the bee system was abolished by the new government, the same one for which he had fought. Moreover, his father died unexpectedly in 1952. Almost 30 years later, after the reforms and opening of this closed area in 1980, Wang Zhisheng was formally declared to be a bee. His cousin, a fully qualified bee, summoned all the villages to a simple ceremony and announced Wang Shisheng is now the bee of this village. The traditional architecture of Chang culture is a flat roofed house built of stones. A white quartz stone called Lopu in Chang language is placed on the roof. It symbolizes the god of the sky the Chung's belief system encompasses more than 20 kinds of gods, almost all of which are symbolized with lopu, white stones. However, in the Chung belief system, there are no holy statues or icons. The only exception is Abba Mula, the supreme deity. Abba Mula is the first bee who descended from heaven. He is represented by the head of a dead monkey. The second day of the first month of lunar calendar is Abba Mula's birthday. On that day, the bee, according to tradition, will place a new white colored cloth on the sacred statue. The Abba Mula cannot be touched on any other occasion. Here, Wan Chersheng demonstrates the ritual for Abba Mula's birthday. Kabo, 
Kaboye kabo zete Pshiru yo pshiru metsu Joru ye joru teke Lare lare juso Lulu ye lulu metsu Galu ye galu teke Lare lare juso Wang Zhisheng explains that according to one account in the Chang scriptures, one day shortly after the first bee descended down from heaven, Abba Mula came back from the Western world with his holy book. He was very tired and went to sleep. When he awoke, he found the holy book had been eaten by a sheep. Without the holy book, Abba Mula soon forgot all the scriptures. Then a monkey came and told him to kill the sheep and use the skin to make a drum. The monkey told Abba Mula to play the drum and sing the chants. In this way, Abba Mula was able to recall all of the scriptures. Since that ancient time, all the bees in the world pay homage to that original monkey with a sacred statue, the head of a dead monkey, also called the Abba Mula. This monkey head belonged to a Changpeng village bee who died 34 years ago. His widow, now 70 years old, explained that this Abba Mula had been handed down six generations before her husband received it. Her grief and sorrow for her husband surfaced during the filming of the Abba Mula. rituals and offerings to the deities, the most solemn one is Guabalik, a grand ceremony usually conducted on the first day of the eighth month of the lunar calendar. Here, Wang Chusheng demonstrates a verse from the Guabalik ritual. is a ceremony in which the entire village takes part. People pray to express gratitude for the harvest and to ask for the goodwill of the gods for the approaching autumn. The bees chant for this ritual is the most sacred part of the holy book. The bee prays for the good health of all villages. He asks that all livestock live and grow strong, for the world to be at peace that there be no disasters or afflictions, that the green shoots of grain will grow sturdy, and for a good, strong harvest of food crops. Guabalik has not been held in Changpeng since 1952. 
On one hillside, near the bee's house, is the holy woods where Guabalik used to be celebrated. At that time, the villagers would sacrifice several sheep and hang them on the holy trees as offering to several deities, the god of the sky, the god of the land, the god of the woods, the god of the ponds, and the god of the crops. This is a new house being built, not far from Wang Zhisheng's home. The changes in Chang culture, as influenced by the surrounding Han culture, can be seen most clearly in the architecture. The design of this house seems to emulate the Han buildings of the big city Chengdu, perceived by villages to be modern and fashionable. For those villagers who have extra income, the brick and concrete walls supported by wooden beams reflect their success in the new economic reforms designed to move China toward a market system. These building materials are expensive as compared to the stones which can be hauled out of the nearby mountain at very little cost. Here can be seen the Han-style tile roofs existing side by side with the traditional Chang flat roofs. Peddlers often come to the village to sell small articles. Many villages are very interested in the newest items for sale, excited to see the latest goods. Chengfeng has been selected as an official tourist village under the government's policy to develop and promote the tourism industry. The Chinese government officials in charge of tourism in this area are quite straightforward in it acknowledging that Chengfeng is a village that has experienced some loss of Chang customs and language. Yet, at the same time, Chengfeng has been designated as an ethnic cultural village for tourism and is in the midst of renovation and preparation for expected Chinese and perhaps foreign tourists. So, it would seem that Chengfeng is to be marketed as a typical Chang village. Chengfeng most elders in the village can speak both Chang language and Chinese, while more and more young people have become accustomed to talking with each other only in Chinese. The children who live in the area right next to the main road cannot speak any Chang not even one sentence. Since the B scriptures are recited in Chang language, it's difficult to know how the shaman songs will survive. How will they be transmitted to the next generation? <laughs> This is the only school in the village, a primary school for grades one through four. Formerly, the entire curriculum of the school was taught in Chinese. Two years ago, however, this school was selected by the Chinese government for an experimental Chang language program. Each week, one lesson of Chang language is taught for pupils in grades three and four. 
Since the Chung language has no written characters, the teacher employs a system of phonetic symbols recently designed by linguists to help students pronounce the Chung words. Wang Xiaofu, the bee's grandson, is now in the second grade. He has to wait another year until he has the chance to learn Chung language in the school.